Welcome to our citrus collection. We're going to start off by looking at the Moral Blood Orange. This Blood Orange is on a standard rootstock, and what that means is that the tree can get up to 25 feet tall and 25 feet wide. With citrus that you want a lot of, it's good to have it on a standard rootstock because the tree grows faster and then it's going to produce more. Because if you think of a, a rootstock as like a straw, if you have a large straw, it could take up more nutrients. You can get more drink out of your cup quick, more quickly. And one thing about citrus, especially the sweet types like the oranges and the mandarins and tangerines, is that they are alternate bearing. So what that means is one year they'll make a lot of fruit and then the following year it will, they'll make relatively less. And that is a self-preservation preservation method by the tree because it takes a lot of energy to make fruit and if they make a lot of fruit year after year they'll actually exhaust themselves and they can die so a lot of the varieties know how to regulate that there is a type of tangerine um, called the honey tangerine or the mercot and we have that one growing on the slope that variety in a commercial setting may not be able to rele relegate itself and it can actually die of carbohydrate starvation this year is the year that is the abundant year for citrus in Southern California and we have a lot of moral blood oranges on the tree so um, I'm gonna pan underneath and you can get a good look at how many oranges there are it's really loaded this year and we're going to harvest some and take them into the greenhouse and show show you what they look like on the inside. Um, one quick note before we head off. This is probably slightly smaller than the typical Moral Blood Orange because it's on the heavy bearing year. We're gonna have more fruit, but they tend to be smaller. Um, in some years, they can get as big as a navel orange. And my brother is growing one over um, east of here. And his blood oranges are rather big this year. The other thing about the growing location in our collection is that this tree uh, on the slope here, that's the, that's the east, and then over here is the south, and we have a lot of clearance right now, and this tree gets a lot of sunlight. So with sweet citrus like oranges and tangerines, you're gonna need a lot of sunlight, and in Southern California, we have a lot of that. If you're trying to grow this elsewhere in a cooler climate, uh, it might be really difficult and challenging to get uh, orange that will taste really sweet and really nice. All right, let's go and head off to the north portion of our property where we have more citrus trees and we'll look at those ones over there. Here we are on the north portion of our property and this is a good growing area for citrus because this is a little sliver of growing space where we can get some sunlight for them. Uh, in the middle parts of the property, the houses create shadow in the afternoon. We're going to be standing in front of this Taroko blood orange here, and this is on a semi-dwarf rootstock. So this tree can get uh, big, but it doesn't grow as quickly, and so it remains pretty short. And we have some Taroko blood oranges, so we'll uh, harvest some and take them into the greenhouse. And right next to the uh, Taroko or Taroko blood orange is a Sanguinelli blood orange. And this tree was transplanted into this space last year. And it's now making uh, buds for next year. One of the things that I found when it comes to transplanting trees is it takes them a year to establish themselves. So it dropped all the fruit and we have some small fruit that we can take into the greenhouse and and look at it closely as well. Uh, so this is a tree that we have had for seven years now actually. We've been growing it in a container uh, and we grew it in there in case we needed a move or something but now since we're probably going to be settling here for a while and since we know how to graft citrus trees we can easily graft take some uh, budwood graft it onto a new rootstock and bring it with us. This tree is on a dwarf rootstock, and with dwarfs, they grow slowly. And one good thing about the dwarf is if you don't need a lot of oranges, um, it's 
a space saving form factor. So with the Sanguinelli, uh, we don't need a lot of these oranges. So it's good to have it on a dwarf fruit stock. And there's one more to look at, and it is the vanilla blood orange. And we're gonna go to a different part of our property and look at that one. Over here on the side of the house towards the front, we have the vanilla blood orange. And this is also on a root stock. And the oranges are more plentiful this year, but like the other ones, they're smaller. So we're gonna pick uh, some of these and bring them into the greenhouse. And before we head over there, there's a graft here that I wanna show you. This down here is a cleft graft that we did last year. It's for a Sanguinello blood orange and the Sanguinello is a Spanish type of blood orange. And the Sanguinelli that we just looked at earlier is the Italian type. And if I have that mixed up, uh, please check the description, the video description, because sometimes I get things mixed up. But um, one, one is a Spanish variety, the other is an Italian variety. And if you're also interested in citrus, we have another interesting graph that we did last year. And we grafted it onto our lemon. And this is the King Tanger. In Vietnam, it's known as the Cam Sa. So we're gonna be uh, giving this a taste test in a month or so, if not sooner, and be sure to look out for that video. All right, let's head to the greenhouse and check these blood oranges out. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Crazy About Citrus. My name is Brian. I am an avid citrus collector, and blood oranges are one of the most interesting types of citrus to collect. Today, we have a pretty good spread of all the different types of citrus or blood oranges that you can purchase uh, starting with the Moro that's in this basket and the ones with the st stems on them that's the Taraco and the one that's uh, clustered together here this is a Sanguinelli and the ones without stems these are vanilla blood oranges while technically not a blood orange and we'll get into why that is in a little bit and then this is a Bahabza blood orange on the tree here this is one that we grafted because it's not really available for purchase. In, this, in today's video, I'm gonna do an in-depth comparison of all the blood oranges. And the question I get often is, which blood orange should I grow? If you only can grow one type, I would recommend growing the moral blood orange. Uh, while you can find this blood orange at the farmer's market, and even these days, blood oranges are getting really popular. You can buy them at the supermarket. And this is a good universal, blood orange to get you can eat it as a eating orange you can peel it and eat it you can get the juice from it to make uh, juice or you can use it in recipes you can make cocktails um, use the juice in a kombucha and the reason I suggest this one is because it has a lot of that anthocyanin in the blood orange that people are after um, second would probably be maybe a taraco blood orange this is one that you can get the juice of is actually very sweet so you can get orange juice fresh orange juice in the winter time and then maybe for novelty coming in third is the sanguinelli blood orange this is the probably the tartest one of them all and it has doesn't have a lot of anthocyanins to to be really worthwhile to grow so it's a novelty one um, so in conclusion if you're looking for a novel blood orange to grow, then I would recommend the Sanguinelli because you can find the moral at the market. But if you're after uh, blood oranges off your tree, then I would recommend the moral. So let's uh, start with the comparisons. Uh, I'm gonna go and start with the moral. And like I said, it's a nice and easy orange to grow and you can peel it and, and get a fresh peeling orange. You could pack it in your lunch bag and you can peel it so it peels easily and um, we have one of these orange peelers as an assist and I wanted to demonstrate for you let's get rid of the stem here let's take the stem off and we're going to score the orange so that it's easier to peel and if you need to there's this back end here that will lift the peel off the orange a little bit and then you can Get your thumb under there and peel this blood orange. So I'm going to do this uh, 
and show you what it looks like as a peeling orange. One thing to note is that the moral is actually very juicy. So you can actually uh, squeeze some of that juice out of the blood orange. So you have to really handle it kind of gently. You don't want to grab onto the orange too tightly as you're peeling because you'll actually squish and juice it in the process. So we're starting to see some of that juice come out of it. Okay, so let's uh, peel it apart and look at it. It's, it separates very easily, so it makes a nice eating orange. And like I said, you can bring it for lunchtime and have some of the uh, nice healthy qualities of the anthocyanin. And you can see all that deep red color It's very juicy and I'm making this video in the morning time and these are nice and cold. It's got tartness to it so it is sweet enough that it's not going to cause your face to pucker up but if you're sensitive to the tartness uh, it does have a good bit of it and it's and that tartness is actually pretty good for your your immune system as well. These are very good. I have to have a, another, another taste before we move on. So that's the Moro Blood Orange. We're going to get into the Taraco now. And the, when we move on to these oranges over here, these are more of the juicing oranges. They're difficult to peel and they are better as juicing. So with, and as we're talking about juicing, um, they're gonna, some are gonna be really sweet, like this Taraco and this Bahabza. So we'll, we'll cut into it and look at how they look like on the inside. This year in California, the citrus are very plentiful this year and we're getting a lot of citrus, but they tend to run on the smaller size and that's how it works with distribution. Uh, if you have to spread out to more entities, they're going to end up being smaller. So uh, just do note that these are typically larger in a year where it's not uh, setting a heavy fruit. So we're seeing smaller ones. And here's a really nice look at the Taraco. It's got very thin skin. And the nice thing about the Taraco is there's a lot of juice and you can juice it very easily. So like I had said in the video uh, highlighting the Bahabsa, one of the nice things about um, juicing oranges is if it's easy to juice you don't need a lot of effort and you're not pressing the citrus oil into your juice the citrus oil will taint the flavor and you will get some of the bitterness and the spiciness of the in your juice and one of the things about the thin skin is that it will crack when you're juicing it so you have to be really gentle but it takes very minimal effort to get a lot of juice from this orange so here we go. We're going to juice this and we're going to juice this half. The, uh, the Taraco orange does have seeds. The moral on occasion, you'll find a seed in it. And that's kind of like, um, your, these are basically like your two main types of oranges, but with anthocyanins in them. So when you, when you think of the moral, you can think of it as more like a navel orange. Uh, they tend to be seedless and then when you think about these juicing ones you can think of them as your juicing orange that you get in the summertime like the valencias okay so this is the uh, juice from one uh, taraco let's pour it into this glass here in years past when we had the taraco juice it's very sweet um, and this year we're getting more of the uh, anthocyanin quality to it. So it's a nice and, and deep orange this year. It's got like a pink color. And let's go and let's take a taste of it. Um, there are hints of um, tartness this year. So it's a, it's a tart uh, juice. We're going to juice this next orange here 
and this is the first time we had it this year. And in the previous video, we discovered that the Bahabza blood orange is very sweet. So, uh, so right off the bat, it's a very sweet orange. I'm going to get two off the tree here. Um, let's see, let's get this one. Because these are smaller than one of these uh, Taracos. And I'm going to juice. Let's move this out of the way. I'm not sure if it's blocking our second camera. Let's cut into it. And you can see some of the uh, anthocyanins there. Let's cut into this one. And this one has less of the anthocyanin. Um, as we're talking about the quant qual quantity of anthocyanins, the more red that you're going to find, the more tart your, your citrus is going to be. So that's... So if we, uh, if we juice, let's take the seed out of this one. If we juice this one that has less of the anthocyanin, I bet it's going to be a lot sweeter. So let's, let's try that. Let's try juicing this one. And then we'll take a test, taste test of it. Okay, let's take a taste test of this one. And this glass here. And then I'm going to juice the second one here with the one that has more of the anthocyanins in it. Let's pour it in here and we can kind of look at the difference in the color. Okay, so. And then next I'm going to uh, juice the Moro so you can see the color of the Moro as well. So these are the the three, um, well, the Moro and the Taraco are the three most commonly available citrus uh, varieties that you can find at a nursery to purchase to grow on your own. So let's pour this in there. Oh, I messed it up. I'm sorry. I, I was just busy throwing, clearing our space and I just mixed everything. I'm sorry. So we have a mix of the Taraco. Um, I'll just go and juice. I'll just go and juice the, uh, Oh, not, not the Taraco, but a mix of the, um, the Bahabza. So, yeah, we're, I'm starting to get, lose track here. We got, we have, uh, quite a few to try to coordinate here with our pile of citrus peels, the different varieties. So, okay, let's work through this. Okay, this is, this is the Moro. Okay, so here's the Moro, and you, and the color is very, very apparent in in the difference in colors. So that's the Moro, and let's get in the last one here, the the Sanguinelli. Uh, this is a variety that typically matures in mid February. It gets sweeter at that time, um, and these these other varieties they they are best in January. So I wanted to bring this in for just a, for a comparison, though it might not be a true taste comparison when it comes to uh, sweetness. And this year, the Sanguinelli is actually quite deep red in color. Wow, it's very impressive. And the other thing to note about the ones that we're looking at is that, uh, like I had mentioned in the uh, field tour, our tree was recently transplanted, so it's not going to produce the best fruit for us in terms of size. Uh, and uh, here we can see that the rind is pretty thick. It's typically thick, but not this thick. So this is a atypical year for it. Let's clear out our juice juicer. And when it comes to juicing, I prefer to use this type of juicer, like I had mentioned, because it doesn't squeeze in the citrus oil. Uh, there's another type of juicer that you can get, which is that hand lever one. That one, you can juice things quickly, but at the same time, it can juice, and it typically does squeeze the uh, citrus oils into the juice. Yeah, so let's get as much as we can out of this.
And I'm going to save, since we only have um, two this year, I'm going to save this half for a photo later that I may take for record just to compare all the different um, varieties that we harvested this year. So this is the Sanguinelli, and this, this is, um, I believe, a, an Italian variety. So, okay, so that's Sanguinelli. And this year, it's got more anthocyanins than the moral. And it's, it's getting bloody in here. I better clean off my hands because it's starting to look like a murder scene in here. Okay, so we have the Sanguinelli. Let's taste it. See how I'm expecting it to be very tart. It's actually very good this year. Um, it tastes like blackberries. Hmm, that's very interesting. Um, I don't like to make comparisons of of um, taste to other fruit. I really want to reserve making those comparisons because there is a marketing element to it, and I'm not here to market any of these varieties. I want to be as truthful as possible, but uh, one of the things that reminded me of um, a different flavor when I had this Sanguinelli is that it tastes like blackberry. So I maybe earlier when I said that the Sanguinelli is probably a third uh, novel type of blood orange to grow. Um, do note that d depending on your preference for things, this might be the first variety that you want to grow because this is not one that you can find um, avail readily available. So as far as a novel um, variety to grow, this is the first one that you should grow if you're after that. And then uh, Moro. It's got a nice flavor. It's got a nice aftertaste. Um, and then the this is the Bahubza. And I know to really do it right, I have to cleanse my, my palate between tastes with water, but um, I might have to use restroom breaks if I do that because we're <laughs> we're doing a lot of tastings here. Oh yeah, very sweet, very very sweet. So it's very sweet this year. This this uh, Bahubza, and I guess one of the nice things about having a collection of citrus is that each year, depending on the climate conditions, the tree will respond differently. So maybe this year it's super sweet, next year it's not, and to have um, different variety it kind of buffers you have that buffer that you can find oh if the taraco is not sweet then I will go and load up on the um, Bahubza so that's one of the nice things about having a collection of citrus and if you're space limited um, look into growing these dwarf varieties uh, where they just stay pretty compact and they tend to be this size as you saw uh, when we did the uh, look at them in the uh, grove outside Okay, um, <clears throat> some of that <clears throat> part of me, maybe I do need water after all because some of that acid is starting to hit my throat and might start to irritate it. All right, uh, I think I was starting to uh, try this one out if I haven't already. Yep, that's, that's pretty sweet. Let's come back to this one. Oh yeah, that one. That one's very sweet. It's like off the charts sweet. So Taraco, let's move this around. Um, Moro, Sanguinelli, uh, Taraco, and Bahubza. So one of the things about growing different varieties is that you can actually mix the different uh, juices together. So if you find that the Moro is too tart, you can mix it and uh, get, get a nice balance between the flavors. So here is the uh, moral, which was uh, on the very tart side, and we're mixing it with the more um, Bahubza that's on the sweet side. Wow, it's delicious. It's um, it's really good. Um, so this is probably why I really enjoy growing blood oranges is because there's a lot of variants and there are different types and you can have a lot of fun with it. You can 
mix it together to get a nice juice. And then also from it, if you do, if you're making uh, kombucha, uh, kombucha, um, you can mix it in there and you get a really nice red drink out of it. Very flavorful. You get the fizz out of it as well. So you get this nice um, soda quality to it. And um, so that's pretty much the comparisons of the different varieties. Uh, if I think of anything else that I left out, uh, I'll put it in the video description. Um, and like I said, this year, our trees in uh, California, in general, this is the abundant year. And this is just one basket off of our Moro blood orange tree. And then they're clustering pretty wild this year. And this is one that uh, I was going, this branch I was going to prune anyways. So I just went and just chopped it all off. One thing to note with the citrus quarantine, if you're sharing citrus, uh, this is not how it's advised that you share it because on the leaves, on the, on the branches, the stems, there could be bugs that you can spread to uh, out of your area. So even if you're, the person you're sharing with doesn't have an orange tree, um, it's still an issue because they can get off these branches and move on to a plant nearby and then they leapfrog and then they spread disease elsewhere. So the best way to share citrus is if you just remove all the leaves and leave this stem part. One of the things about leaving the stem parts is that the stem actually helps preserve the fruit because the bacteria that will go and rot the fruit will enter through the softest part, which is the membrane underneath the, the stem. And with the vanilla blood oranges, I removed the stem so that we can um, identify what they are. And um, I almost ended the show without talking about the vanilla blood orange. So let's talk about them. Let's, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Um, all right, so this is known as a vanilla blood orange and I think it has a formal name. I think it's an Italian variety. Um, and I think it's like a vanilla sanguinelli or something like that. Well, sanguinelli means uh, blood orange in Italian, if I have that right. And the reason why this, this blood orange is not really considered or is not considered a blood orange in my, um, in my view is because the color that it gets is not from anthocyanins, it's from lycopene. And lycopene is the color that you find in tomatoes and carrots. The other orange that has lycopene is the Caracara navel orange. And that one, a lot of people are very familiar with. Those are actually pretty good tasting uh, um, oranges. And we also grow a lemon that has lycopene. It's called the pink lemonade uh, lemon. And if you had noticed when we looked at the vanilla blood oranges out in our uh, collection, you'll notice that nearby was or is a pink lemonade lemon. And that's the lemon tree with the variegated pattern on the fruit and on the leaves. So here it is. Here's the vanilla blood orange. It's got a lot of seeds and it's got the, the color that look, looks reddish and looks like anthocyanins, but, but it's actually lycopene so let me let me um i should have gone and cleaned some of this stuff off before we uh, juice this one because we don't want to um to contaminate this this juice here so let me wash this off real quick this is almost a, a live show here a pre-recorded live show and we're just fearing things on the fly let's give some of this juice back to the tree here okay now I'll go ahead and rinse some of this off too All right, here we go. And when I tasted the juice of the vanilla blood orange in the past, I really like the texture of the juice. And um, before I talk about that and move on, I forgot to talk about the textures of these juices. So um, with the juicing blood oranges, your Taraco, your Sanguinelli, and your Bahabza, it's a, a juicing orange, so it has very little pulp. Uh, the moral has a little bit of pulp. That's 
a little bit more. So relatively speaking, has a little bit more. It's not a very pulpy orange. So it's great for making, um, taking the juice and putting it in things in recipes. So, uh, so there's that. And the vanilla blown orange, when I tasted it in the past, the juice was very silky. It has this very fine texture. It's not pulpy and, and it's nice and silky. So that's, that's one of the nice qualities about the, the, the vanilla, uh, blood orange. And, um, I, I forget if it's actually sweet or not. I think it might've been on the tart side. So we'll find out together how that is. Let's get some more and, and get a good amount of juice here. And I, I suppose it would be on the sweet side because it doesn't have the anthocyanins uh, that makes it tart. And once again, this is this year we're getting more citrus on trees, but they are smaller. The vanilla blood orange typically is bigger. I would say by at least 25 to 30% bigger than what you're seeing. And we're seeing a lot of seeds on these, um, on these oranges. They juice easily. So we can easily juice these uh, oranges with minimal effort and also reducing the chance of getting uh, citrus oils into our juice. And this variety, the season of ripeness in, in Southern California in the LA area is around January. So early January, we're, we're getting to the end of January. So they're, they're starting to get close to their window. And I would say that as far as the fruit window, the vanilla one has a short window. And that's another thing that we can talk about as I'm juicing here is the, um, is how well these varieties hold on the tree. And by holding on the tree, it means two things. Uh, it means it literally holding on the tree and not dropping and hitting the ground and getting contaminated with, uh, with the soil. And the other thing about holding on a tree is how well, when it actually does hold on a tree, how well it maintains its flavor. So um, with some of these, like the vanilla, uh, we found that you have to have it um, between late December to right about now, because as it goes further along, the, tr the fruit will actually start to get some blemish issues. So here we're looking at the the blood orange, and I don't know if you can pick it up on the on the video here, but that when you pour, when I'm pouring this, you can see that the liquid is kind of viscous, so it was it was moving, it was traveling at a slower rate of speed, and um, that has to do with the the fine pulp that it has. So let's let's go and try it. I needed a second taste because I need to process this, um, what I'm tasting because it does not taste like orange. Um, I'm trying to, trying to compare and see and think about what it tastes like. I'm going to need another taste test here. Yeah, it's a very interesting orange. Um, if I, let me try it again. I can't, I can't describe it right now. It's, um, it's very difficult to describe. Um, if, if I can make a joke, I would say it tastes like a carrot or, or a tomato because of the lycopene pre presence. Almost, almost like a, um, very, like if you were to take a mango and juice it up and add water to it, But it, but it is very sweet. So it's a very sweet um, orange. It does not taste like orange. It doesn't have that. Uh, orange has this acidity quality to it, so it has that 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 nice spiciness when you uh, have the orange juice. So let's let's take this one over here to compare. Here. I guess. I guess when you have orange, you can kind of taste the, the citric acid or the, the oils in the, in the peel. Whereas this one, it 
doesn't. It's very interesting. Um, it almost tastes like a nectar. Like I had mentioned earlier, with the way the pulp tends to be in there and it tends to be on the fine side, it has this viscousness to it and it has um, a nectar quality to it. So it's like confusing. It's confusing how my brain is interpreting the taste because as it hits my tongue, it has this thickness to it. Um, but I wouldn't say it's so thick. I don't want to exaggerate and say it's really thick, but you do get that nectar quality to, to this orange. So yeah, yeah, it does. It really does taste like mango to me. Maybe it's because I'm looking at it. I'm feeling it on my tongue. It's orange color, like a mango and it tastes like mango, even maybe a little bit like papaya. So yeah, so there's the vanilla blood orange and um, all the different types of blood oranges that you can purchase and grow. And um, if you're, if you have access to the uh, budwood through the citrus clonal protection program that's uh, run and maintained by the University of California and administered at the University of California Riverside, you can um, get the budwood and if, and if you are able to, you can graft it onto a tree and grow it for yourself. Um, but overall, I hope this video has been helpful for you if you're looking into growing uh, blood oranges and um, you're deciding which one to grow. Uh, if you can, get the dwarf trees and fit uh, at least a few varieties so that you can have a nice mix and literally mix them together if one tree one year doesn't taste as sweet as you like or uh, if it doesn't have as much anthocyanins as you like you can mix it all together and we also grafted another variety the um, Spanish uh, cousin or sister to the Sanguinelli um, and over there they call it a Sanguinello and we're hoping to get fruit from that so in, in maybe a few years time we can come back and do another one of these videos and do a comparison once again and with that we're going to end our uh, blood orange video and it's been really fun to grow and taste these and i hope that i was able to bring this experience to you and uh, be sure to check back for future videos when we look at other citrus varieties that we're growing and have grafted and the next one i'm very excited about is the king tanger mandarin and in vietnam it's known as gam sa and this variety has uh, a long legacy because from this variety, a lot of the um, commercial mandarins that we're eating these days that are marketed under names like halos and cuties, uh, they were um, derived from that from this variety in some way or another. And um, this plant is a really cool one to have in a collection. And in a few weeks, we're going to taste it and see how it is and experience it for ourselves and then we'll share it with you. So until then, thank you for watching and we'll see you in a future video.